Hello YouTube, PsychoFox here. Uh, this is uh, going to be a video when I'm repairing my Amiga 500 power supply. Not sure if you remember, but I picked up the Amiga 500 a few weeks ago and the power supply was faulty. It just emitted a puff of smoke and a crackling sound when I switched it on. Uh, it turns out one of the, I think it's a capacitor in it, uh, has cracked open and well, it probably could be, could be, you know, repaired, but it's not really worth it as far as I can see. The whole of the internals, the power supply just smelt of burning and it just really, it was a bit grim. So what I decided to do is uh, sort of future proof it and put something new inside it, keeping the original case. So we've got the uh, AC in here side and we've kept the original power switch. And we've got that, so that's all the AC wires there, live and neutral. And ground and this side connected to the old socket that goes in the back of the Amiga, we've got all the DC side. So, there seems to be two versions of this power supply, a really heavy one and a light one. Now the wiring is slightly different on each. This is the light one. And what I found out doing continuity is, if we look at the tip on this one, where are we? There we are. On this one, top left, is the brown wire, which you can see down there. Uh, top left is the brown wire, which is uh, plus 12 volts. Top right is the black wire, which is ground, and that is the thin black wire, not the thick one you can see in the background. Uh, center is minus 12 volt, which is the white wire. Bottom left is a uh, shield, which is the big black wire and bottom right is plus 5 volts which is both the red and the yellow wires for some reason in the heavy version of this power pack uh, that's slightly different so what I'm going to be doing is uh, put one of these in this is a Meanwell RT50B power supply and that will snugly fit in there the only thing I'm going to have to do is these wires here aren't long enough to stretch under and into these little screwing sections so I'm going to have to elongate these wires with an extension but the AC side will plug in here so on this thing that's where it's all going to go so that's just a 5 volt uh, adjustment there uh, plus 5 so that'll be the red and yellow wires uh, com will be the black as far as I can tell judging by my yeah uh, plus V2 here will be the 12 volts V3 will be the minus 12 volts NC isn't used and the ground here that's where the shield goes that big black cable and the yellow and green earth cable from the AC side and then live and neutral from the AC side there so as far as I can tell that's how I'm going to do it so it's quite nice that I'm going to be able to utilize the old casing and the old switch keep it all looking as it should so yeah this thing cost me about 20 quid 20 odd quid off Amazon so it's, uh, it's a good fit but as far as I know it will work with an Amiga 500, unless it's sort of got a lot of expansions on, then it might, you know, be a bit power hungry. But for a standard, it should work fine. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll get it all wired in, and we'll we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I've wired everything in. It's sat in there a bit wonky at the moment, but I've just tested all the voltages and all the continuity, and it seems to be working. Uh, so the next step is to head up into the loft and power up the Amiga 500 and let's hope for um, let's hope for a bit of a better experience than last time when the power supply went up in smoke so bear with me a second and we'll get it all plugged in okay so I've got the power supply balanced on the old uh, Amstrad PCW9512 here I've not got the top on it yet uh, I'll just make sure it's actually powering the Amiga first 
So I've got the TV all tuned in, I hope. So, yeah, genuine uh, apprehension at this point. So, should you see a green light up here? Power light on the Amiga. Nothing on screen yet. We've got a power light. I could well be on the wrong channel. But we've got power and I can hear the drive making a noise. So that is a good start. It could well be that this cable that connects it to the TV is iffy. But anyway, I'll investigate that further, but it is powering the Amiga, so we're getting there. Okay, bear with me guys. Okay, so I couldn't find anything wrong with the cable. Uh, I'll show you what's happening with the floppy drive at the moment. So if you put a disc in... Yeah, that doesn't sound good if you listen, it just ticks every so often when powered on. Floppy drive just ticks. About every four seconds. And yeah, we're getting nothing on screen. So, uh, we're getting better. I mean, I've got power to the thing. The floppy drive is getting power. So, that part has been successful. So I can close that up. But yeah, guys, please let me know what's going on with the rest of it, because I'd like to get this fixed. Because it's, uh, it's a nice uh, nice condition Amiga. I'd be ashamed to see it uh, in this sorry state for much longer. So yeah, let me know what, what you think the issue might be with this black screen. Obviously the floppy drive needs a bit of attention, but could that be causing the black screen? I've took out the memory expansion while well, I'm testing as well, and that, that looks... Um, that looks alright. Uh, so, yeah. Let me know. Cheers. Okay, so I've been doing a bit more investigating. I took the uh, SCART cable apart. And just checking um, that this isn't the problem. I mean, that's all the wires that are actually inside the thing. You've got a blue, a white, a yellow, and a red. That's all that's connected. And this is obviously the bit that goes in the... Uh, in the back of the Amiga and every other wire and if you can see that probably not, it's just clipped off just where it comes out of the black insulation at the bottom so I was wondering if that's um, that's normal you've got these two cables that I believe are the sound and uh, on the other end that's the pins on the scar so I mean the thing's only got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pins so I mean, is this uh, is this normal? Could this be the cause? I mean, even if it is the cause of the black screen, obviously that floppy drive needs looking at. But yeah, so I'm not too familiar with Amigas uh, and their SCART connectors because I did own one before. But I just had the um, the modulator that went to RF. So uh, yeah, please um, please let me know what you think. Cheers. Okay, so I've opened up the Amiga, and if you can see there, it uh, dates from 1988, and it's Amiga 500 Revision 6A. So we've got all the chips here. Um, Fat Angus chip. Uh, what the other one's called? Paula and Gary, Denise. So um, what I'm going to do is just give these a gentle press down in case any of them have become unseated at some point in the past. Um, it's not too bad in here, a bit of dust. I mean, it look, looks quite clean. There's no um, capacitor leakages that I can see. So uh, the RAM chip's at the bottom. I'm going to give everything a little, a little press down. That first RAM chip felt a bit a bit loose actually so that's what I'll do um, I'll 
I'll do all that and I'll uh, put it back together and give things another go. And if not, uh, I think I'll give up until I've got some more information uh, about that scar cable and about other other things that could be causing this issue. So uh, let's give this a go. So no, no, no change. Unfortunately, I'll just show you what's happening. Um, you get a brief flash of a white screen when you turn on and off. If you saw that there, turn off again and on and off and on. So yeah, you're getting a very slight um, you get a very slight flash on the screen when the power is put on, but that's it. So. I'm really not sure what's going on with this, so uh, yeah, please let me know if you can help. So, thanks for watching.